I think I'll be sliding around all day today because this is quite a slippy surface. So it might be yoga with entertainment. Now sit up nice and tall, close your eyes. And let's start to put away, put aside, put behind you or outside the door or wherever it is you feel like you can place all those things that are weighing on you in any way or preying on your mind or just hanging around. So for our Santosha practice, increasing our sense of contentment and gratitude and happiness and joy, we take time to focus on ourselves. And to do that, we can consciously put aside everything else. And know that because we have busy, busy minds, amazing, wonderful, incredible minds, things will pop in and appear and try to just notice them like a little troop of monkeys going past the window. Notice them, but don't engage, don't focus, don't concentrate, don't go with the monkeys, just come back to yourself, bring yourself back to your breath, back to your heart center. In this practice today, your focus area, if you wish, could be your heart center. So when you breathe in, as you feel your chest rise, giving your attention to your heart center as you breathe out, allowing your rib cage to sink and settle back. Again, bringing your attention to your heart center. So that's your sternum, just above your sternum. However big a space you wish to picture, just a feeling, a sensation of being very aware of your core, your center, your heart. Lifting your crown of your head now up towards the ceiling, lengthening through the back, lengthening through the sides of your body as well. Big space there. As if you're trying to move your bottom ribs away from your hip bones. And at the same time, when you've done that and made that space, you then allow your shoulders to come to a sense of being at peace and rest. So your shoulders are not poking up towards your ears. Gentle lift of your chin so you've got lots of space to breathe in. And out. So we're breathing in through the nostrils. We're trying to increase uh, beautiful, deep, slow breathing. When you breathe out, emptying completely, making lots and lots of effort in that exhalation. Squeezing the muscles in your core, squeezing out the breath and leaving a little bit of a gap. So hold on to that emptiness for just a couple of beats, a couple of seconds before you allow that breath to flood back in. Enjoying that breath, enjoying that time, that luxuriating in the breath. Enjoying the breath. Feeling energy start to flow around your body. So that's our nice, slow, deep breath. A couple of cycles of that done. And now we're going to raise the energy a little bit with the breath. So we're going to raise energy, we're going to raise warmth, we're going to raise everything. Awareness, focus, we're going to try and make everything tingle and be completely alive. So open your eyes gently. Take your hands to your belly. Have them just one on top of the other. So maybe you've got your left hand on your lower belly, your right hand just above your belly button. So you've got that whole belly space covered. And we're going to do some, a nice kind of deep inhale, fill up, and then we'll do short, sharp breaths out. So we're coming into Kapalabhati. And if you can, we're breathing in through the nostrils and out through the nostrils as well. So we're gonna breathe in nice and deep, nice and slow, filling up just as we have been. And then for the out breath, it's almost as if you are a pair of bellows and you are 
pulling the belly in, sharp, short pulls in, and that will like, help you expel your breath through your nostrils. Okay, don't worry if it doesn't come easily. Enjoy it if you've done this before and you know what you're doing. Just keep practicing, keep your focus. So let's breathe in together. So take a big inhale through your nostrils. And short, sharp breaths out to count to 10. And in between, it doesn't have to be one breath that you are only breathing out. Allow some breath to come in, in between each sharp, short exhalation. So let's breathe in again together. And again, in. And again. One more if you feel like it. Come to a place of rest if you're starting to feel lightheaded or dizzy. Hands onto your knees now, either palms facing up or down. Go where you're drawn to be and close your eyes, breathe in and out, slowly, easily, at your own pace. Allow your belly to fully relax. Lift your heart center just gently, extending through the spine. Lovely, well done. Okay, so hopefully we've raised energy a little bit and we're going to carry that on by coming straight up to standing. So come up to standing. Take a little space. So we're coming into mountain pose. So legs a little away from each other. Bring your hands forward, open your arms out to the side and allow your shoulders to go through that movement of just opening up. So we're opening up the heart center, opening up the chest, giving ourselves lots of space, lots of room. Keep breathing in nice and deep and slow. Just try not to hold your breath through your practice. Close your eyes, focus on the soles of your feet. Can you push down into your toes? Can you rock gently from side to side, put your weight into your left foot and then more into the right. Come into the left and the right to the point where you know where you are completely in the center. And find that space where you are entirely centered, where your weight is distributed evenly between your left and your right. Think about your shoulders, give them a little bit of a roll, forwards, up, down, forwards, up, back, down, and again with your breath, breathing in as you come into your chest being open, breathing out as you're rounding, close up everything. Just, and then let's change that direction, rolling the other way, starting to get a bit warmer. So lovely big circles but keeping your arms by your side. So all of that movement is coming from your shoulders, not from your arms. Arms are just hanging, just joining in, not leading. And then come to a nice neutral space. So we're in Kadasan mountain pose. We're gonna be really strong in this pose. So think about strengthening the muscles in your legs by getting everything slightly clenched, slightly tense, calves, thighs, glutes, and around your core, your shoulders, your arms, solidify almost, try and be a statue. If somebody came along and gave you a little bit of a shove, you wouldn't move, you wouldn't budge a millimeter because you are absolutely grounded, absolutely strong, determined, powerful, all those wonderful things. So hold that tension in your body, hold that strength, Still keep breathing, don't hold your breath. So we're holding everything else, but not the breath and not any tension in the jaw. So any tension there, release and let go. Sometimes the easiest way to remember to do that is to smile. And relax, release, let everything go. So let's just clasp the fingers together, pop them behind your head, so cradle the back of your head, adjust so that you're comfortable. And then we're going to lean back, 
push your head back. Feel that opening, hopefully, under your arms, across your chest. Keep leaning back. So we're not curling through the lower back. We're just leaning back. Take your shoulders together, the so shoulder blades together, elbows are wide. Feel that everything is moving around your heart center, opening up. And then let's fold forward. So a little bit of a fold forward, bringing the elbows together, bringing the chin to chest, not pulling. So we're not pulling on the head, but we're allowing the weight of our arms to gently add in a little bit of a stretch into the back of the neck. So as if you can just relax your arms, no pulling, just the natural weight of your arms. Feel that stretch extending through the back of your neck into the upper back and all the way down. Still remembering to breathe. Just a little bit of a warm up from the neck. Come up to neutral again. Take your arms nice and wide and stretch them out to the side. So we're reaching out. Look to your left, look to your right. Can you reach a little further? Still taking those nice, deep, slow breaths, stretching out. And keep your arms lifted, keep them out to the side, step your feet a little away from each other. We're going to come into triangle, trikonasana. Take the right foot, point your toes to the narrow end of your mat. And we're going to lean, so lean over, slide to the right. And then we're going to tip. See so if you can get your hands so that they're pointing to 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Long and lean in your body. Nice stretch through the left side. Nice squeeze on the right. So as if you're squeezing in the side of your body. Gazing forward, let's just keep the neck nice and neutral, nice and easy. So lift that left arm. Can you stretch your fingertips up towards the ceiling a little bit more? And then right hand, if you need it, if you feel like it today, use it as a rest, use it to support yourself. Otherwise, just in front of your leg, front of your right leg, gentle touch to the leg. Gives you a little bit of sense of support, but we really want the work to be happening in the torso here. And we're going to lift to come out. So let's lift, inhale, come back to center. Keep your arms lifted. Let's keep those arms working. Right toes flip in, left toes flip out. Think about your hips. Did they move as well? If they did, bring them back to center, nice neutral. Forward facing hips. There you go. So a bit of a tongue twister. And then let's slide over to the left. Come all the way till you can't any further and you feel that in your side. And then do your tilt, tilt and tip over to the side. What happens quite often in a class when I'm with people, if I go around one of the corrections, they will do, I very rarely do physical corrections for people. I prefer to do them verbally. One of the things I do do is I will pull up with that right hand if somebody's in triangle. So lifting up with the hand, making more space in your ribs. So we're making space in the whole of the chest. We're increasing that space in the chest, not just in the front, we want to do the sides as well. Keep breathing nice and deep, as deep as you can. We're squeezing those muscles in the left side, lifting through the right hand up towards the ceiling, stretching out. Can you feel that in your right hip? Still breathing and then lifting up. So lifting up and coming back. Arms are still wide. Bring your toes forward. So toes, all 10 toes pointing in the same direction. And we're going to bend for Brasarita Padopasana. So arms are wide. Pivot at your hips. Send your bum out behind you. Head comes forward. Bend your knees and so lift your kneecaps up. Engage your thighs. Arms are still wide. Nice deep inhalation and exhalation here. How does that feel? Is it easy? Is it hard? Do you feel like you have lots of space? 
So not enough space. I want you to think here for a moment. We won't hold for very long about your pelvic floor. Can you lift your pelvic floor in this position? And then let's pivot forward all the way. Bring your arms down, bring your hands to the floor. Allow your head and neck to rest. So if you were looking at the floor, don't allow your head to hang. Your gaze will naturally be behind you somewhere. Think about the weight of your head, pulling those long muscles either side of your spine very gently to stretch them out and lengthen. And walk your hands between your legs. So we're walking the hands behind, flip them around so your fingertips are pointing behind you now, palms flat to the floor, wrists are forward, fingertips behind and walk your fingers away from you. So you're taking your hands between your legs, walking your fingertips behind, stretching out under your arms, the inner elbows pointing down towards your mat. You're probably not gonna be anywhere near your mat, but the direction that they're facing is towards your mat, as much as possible. So internally rotating. And release. Come up to neutral, cross your hands, cross your arms, allow your head and neck to hang, allow your arms to hang, and then use your core to gently bring yourself up to standing. Are you locking your knees? Can you lift your kneecaps and have a little bit of a bend in your legs? Come up to standing. Last thing to come up will be your head. Roll the way up, chin to chest, and then come up. Well done. Take your hands either side of you. And let's come into a little bit of warrior work. So right foot, send your toes towards the narrow end of your mat. We're going to come into warrior two first. So take your arms nice and wide again, back to that position again. And this time we're going to bend the right knee, extend through the left leg, Gaze over to the middle finger of your right hand, your chin above your right shoulder, and sink as low as you can. Think about your legs being very strong. Well done, stay there for a moment. Then I'm gonna move, because I'm about to end up landing on my behind I think in a minute now so slip can you lengthen a little bit that distance between your legs between your feet as low as you can strong in that right thigh lengthening to the left and then let's take the left hand down right hand up gently touch your leg left leg left hand pointing up towards the ceiling and then come back to neutral. And then let's switch. So straighten both legs, left toes over to the left side. And then we slide over. So hips are facing forward, chin over to the left side now. Think about how much movement you have in your neck. Sometimes you feel you have more on one side than the other. Then can you drop down a little lower? And well done. Take an inhale. Let's take the left hand up. Right hand down towards your leg. Lift up, fingertips up, 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 up towards the ceiling. And let's come back. We're into neutral again. Come back to center. Hands to hips. The hands on hips this time and folding forward. All the way, fold forward all the way. Head down towards the ground. Hands flat to the floor. And then right hand in. So right below your face and head. And lift your left arm and hand up towards the ceiling. Straightening through that left 
arm and the right. So both your arms are straight. Right hand to the ground, left hand to the sky. Turning, if you can, to look up towards your left hand. Still breathing nice and deep and slow. Left hand swoops back down. And then right hand swoops up towards the ceiling. A nice little torso twist. Again, making space, opening up. And then right hand back. Join your left hand. Slowly coming up, uncurling to come up. This time arms dangling, and then all the way up to center. Let's do a little bit of balance work. Bring your feet in. Let's come into our trikonasana. Nope, we're not going to come into vrikshasana. We've been to trikonasana. So tree pose into the left leg, right leg, wherever you wish. So you're here. Putting your heel into your spleen point, pushing into the lower part of your calf, or the side of your calf, toes flat to the floor, and pressing down into your toes, your knee coming out to the right side as much as you possibly can. Get it to come out to the right side, or you can come up to your calf, not to the inside of your knee, so heel just below your knee or you are up right up to the groin knee again coming out to the side as much as possible so find where you're comfortable and then let's take the arms out to the side again when we have the arms out to the side think about lifting your chest lifting your sternum and opening up your heart center imagine you have a light shining beaming out and you want that light to go all the way from where your left hand is to your right. So making lots of space, wide beam. If you prefer, of course, always bring your hands to heart center or we'll take them up above, whatever works for you. Trying to, <laughs> just about to say, trying to find your stillness in the posture and then promptly fell over. So finding your stillness in the posture, focus on a point, a fixed point. Focus on your breath. Take the tip of your tongue into the roof of your mouth, just in front of your teeth, above, and press firmly with the tip of your tongue. Still, any movement in your eyes, keep your breath steady. Well done, keeping your arms up, keeping the balance. Whenever you're in tree pose, rikshasana, and you lose your balance, just gently bring yourself back. Knowing that it happens. And then bringing your hands back. Put them to your hips and let's change sides. So release that right leg. Give your left leg a little bit of a kick around. Bringing your weight now into your right. Making sure that you have a lovely contact in the sole of your foot, in the floor. And then pressing your left heel now into the spring point on your right inner calf. Coming up or staying there or moving up to your calf, staying here or moving further up to your groin. So as always, standing leg stays firm. So making that standing leg rock solid. Think about that leg of yours being the trunk of a tree. And again, arms out to the sides if that works for you. So you can lift your heart center, lift your chest, lift your chin. 
and strong and steady. And if you are having a wobbly day, well, then it's just a windy day. And release if you're ready. Stay there if you're ready. Take a deep breath. And come out. Bring yourself to your mat again. Feet together. Coming into a squat. So take your arms forward all the way down into your squat. And then bring your arms either to wrap around your knees or if you need them for sport, just touching into the ground or husband. However you want. So free choice squat today. It's always a free choice squat. Always take the guidance as guidance and do with it what works for you. So nicely squeezing in, tucking in, nice contact between the thighs and the torso. Keeping your focus low, keeping your focus very inward. Keeping your focus very close around you. And come from here into our tabletop position. So knees to the mat, feet out behind you. And we're taking the right hand forward. So let's set ourselves up nice and firm. Long back, long straight back, belly button tucked in, pelvic floor tucked in. And then stay still, stay where you are in every regard apart from your right hand, which gently swoops forward. Now, if you're having trouble with your wrists here, you can come up onto a knuckle. That can help. If it's all still a bit too much, take yourself back, take the weight off your wrist, and still do the same posture, but putting more emphasis onto using your feet for support rather than your wrist. I still want to be opening up under the arm, opening up on the left, on the right side, big pardon. Do what works for you. Find the adaptation that works for you for today. For all these adaptations and things that we need to do to make this practice our own practice, are wonderful for our ability to test how nicely we are talking to ourselves. So no judgment, just kindness. And then bringing that right hand back, pressing in and exactly the same on the side as on the other side. So if you needed to lean back and put some weight into the tops of your feet, go ahead and do the same thing. If you are up in a standard tabletop, come back to that standard tabletop and then take your left arm up. So we're thinking about opening up under the arm, stretching out across the top of the shoulder, squeezing the fingertips forward, length in the body. So we need that length from your fingertips to that left hip without curling your torso. There's a temptation here to send your hips in a little bit of a squiffy direction. So taking the left hip round so that you can lengthen through the body. No, try, keep them, try and keep them level, try and keep them lined up with the narrow end of your mouth. And then let's bring that arm back again. Send yourself back into Balasana. So time for a little bit of a rest. Big toes together. Send your hips back to your heels. Stretching your arms forward. So look forward to your hands. We're not collapsing down entirely. We're still keeping a nice stretch under your arms. Pushing the palms of your hands into the mat as if you were pushing the floor away from you. Feeling that strength and engagement all along your arms. And then bring your forehead to rest. 
Take your elbows down to the ground if you can and release any pressure on the palms of your hands. So we've still got that lovely stretch across the shoulders, stretch under the arms, but we're releasing any tension or pressure on the wrists, on the hands, and on the forearms. And we're coming up into puppy. So look forward to your hands. This is such a lovely posture. So edging your hands forward, keeping that contact between your torso and your thigh, but lifting your bottom up into the air, sliding your chest forward and allowing your chin to come to the mat. So chin to mat instead of forehead, hips up to the sky, pressing down, really feeling quite big stretch under the arms, cross tops of the shoulders, just adding on from where we were just a moment ago in Balasana. Sending your heart center to melt into the floor. Don't worry if you don't have contact there, just feel that you are reaching down with your heart center to the earth. And we're gently going to come all the way back. Come back into Balas and this time forehead to your mat, arms released. Take your hands either side of you so they're just by your feet. Right hand, palm facing upwards next to your right foot. Left hand, palm facing upwards next to your left foot. And slowly coming up to kneeling, coming up into hero pose. So in hero, if this is an uncomfortable posture for you, you can take your legs out so that your hips are down towards the floor and you're taking the pressure off. Some people find the pressure on the tops of their feet here unbearable. If that's you, make your adjustment. If not, you're a hero, so sit up nice and tall, gaze is forward, neck is long, shoulders are wide. All those hero kind of attributes, strength and stability and calm. And we take the hands to heart center at the front, pressing your right hand into your left and your left hand into your right. Feeling that lovely strength, feeling your biceps, feeling your shoulders, your triceps, everything working here as you press. Try and press so that your fingertips are pressing together, the knuckles are pressing in together, and the heels of your hands are pressing in together. So if you keep everything straight, there shouldn't be too much on wrist. And then you release, bring the hands all the way behind you and come into a Namaste Mudra behind you. So we're going to curl the right hand up towards the shoulder blades and in between the shoulder blades and the left hand too, and bring them together in prayer position behind you. Like so if this doesn't work, then you gently hold or place them one on top of the other. And what I want you to feel here is not so much what's happening in your hands, but what's happening in your heart center in your chest. So send your heart center forward. It's okay if you have a little bit of a curl in the upper back. The shoulder blades are stretching towards each other. Heart center is lifting. A little bit of a curl in the back and send your belly forward. Lift your chin a little, looking up. And let's take a deep breath here. As deep as you can, and then back into that nice, neutral, easy breath. Bring your spine back to normal. Release your arms. And that's quite strong on wrist. So let's have a little bit of a circle, gentle circle. Make it as fluid as you can. 
and then turn and go in the opposite direction. Let's get some little bit of lubrication into the wrist bones here, a little bit of warming up and stretching. Very nice. So a little bit more heart opening, a little bit more intensity here. Come up to kneeling, tuck your toes under. If you need a little bit extra padding for your knees, go ahead and get some. Or double fold your mat if you're on a yoga mat. That's better. So look after your knees, very valuable pieces of kit. And yes, they can be replaced, but let's not try and do that. Let's try and make them strong and flexible and love them dearly so they last. Shoulders wide. And let's pivot. So we're into the toes and then we're back off into the toes. Feel that stretch along the soles of your feet. We're just warming up here, getting ready for a little bit of camel, a little bit of ostracin. Waking up thighs, huge muscles, great to stretch and work and give some, give the thighs something to think about. Okay, now we're gonna come into camel. So into camel however works for you. Some people like to go in one side and then open out to the other. Some people like to come into one side and then open out, but don't go all the way. And then the next time do the other side. And other people prefer to put their hands on their lower back, fingers pointing downwards, lean back and find your heels. So think about what works for you, and do what works for you. When you're in Ostrasen, shoulder blades together, heart center lifted. If you can, let your head come to rest on the top of your back. Go ahead and do that. If that's not for you, then keep your head lifted. And if this is all lovely and comfortable and feels good, you can always take your feet flat to the floor and move down a little further, a little deeper. Send your hips forward, squeeze your glutes, protect your lower back. Breathe, lift and stretch and expand your heart center. Breathe, if it's too much, come out, come back in. If you're doing one side, now's a good time to switch. If you're comfortable here, find your comfort. Find your position where you feel at ease and stay for a moment, settle. Breathe. And then when you're ready, let's come out together. Come out how you went in. Let's take feet together. So toes are together, knees are nice and wide, as wide as you can get them. And then we fold forward. Lovely counter pose. Folding forward to rest. At the same time, enjoying that nice stretch across the groin, into the thighs. We'll take three breaths here. Make them as deep and as slow as you can. But make them very strong and intentional at the same time. So they're not lazy, relaxed, gentle, easygoing breaths. They're quite ferocious and intentional, but slow and deep. One more. Feel that breath going into your back. And as you breathe out, everything softens and relaxes and let's go. Bring your hands back just inside your knees, fingers flat to the floor, palms flat to the floor and allow yourself to come back up to sitting with a little help from your arms. Bring your feet forward, come into Baddha Konasa. So feet are forward, soles of the feet, Kissing each other, line them up, take some time to admire your feet. 
if you don't admire your feet, just love your feet. And if you don't love your feet, then we need to have a conversation because you need to love your feet. We can help you love your feet. Very important, wonderful, amazing, incredible things. You deserve lots of love and attention and care and appreciation. So knees are going out to the side, shoulders are broad, but you're probably a little bit hampered because you're hopefully holding onto those lovely feet of yours and pulling them gently into your body and lifting your toes slightly up towards you. Whatever you can do to intensify that great stretch all the way along the inside of your thighs, stretching out the start, start. Sartorius muscle, the gracilis, those brilliant muscles that go, well, just allow your leg to move in all these wonderful different directions. So lifting away from your feet, using the muscles in your back, in your sides, keeping your chest open. We're like a rubber band here. So we're going to Keep that left leg folded in, and we're gonna move the right leg out to the side. So a little bit of balance and waving legs around coming up. Are you ready? So left leg stays where it is, or maybe when you take the right foot away, you're able to draw the left foot even closer in towards your body. You can draw your foot in, and if you're able to, take the top of your foot down towards the ground, turning the sole of your foot up, slightly towards towards you, but also up towards the ceiling. And let's hold on to the right foot. So you're either in a toe lock hold, so first two fingers, just gently wrapped around your big toe with the thumb as a lock. And when you do that, make sure that when you're lifting, you're not just dragging your toe, but your toe is also pulling away from you. So you're getting that strength in your toe. Otherwise you can feel like you're ripping your toe off. It's not very nice. And if that doesn't work for you, then you're just holding on along the outside. So try both, see what you prefer. Up tall, lots of length in the sides of your body, length in the front, length in the back, crown of your head lifted. <sighs> Left leg stays still and right leg extends out to the side. <sighs> Can you take your left knee down towards the ground? And can you pull your right shoulder back into your body? So your, the weight of your foot will be driving your shoulder out to the socket. I want you to actively use the muscles in your shoulder to pull back into your body. A little bit of tug of war going on there. There we go, lift. And it doesn't matter if your leg is not straight, if your leg is bent, no worries. It's not a problem at all. Well done, nice balance. You might find that you're leaning back a little bit. That's all right, but not too much. You want to be able to keep that core engaged, keep that work happening in your center, around your midriff. And if you lean back, it takes a little bit of that work away. And then come back to center, that foot, all the way back to center. Breathe. Notice which muscles are engaged and tense that don't need to be. So your left arm can be completely relaxed, just resting here. Your chin and jaw, the muscles in your neck, they can be completely at ease here. And let's bring that foot very slowly and gently in and let's swap around. So right foot now with the sole pointing towards you and up a little left foot gets to go for a little bit of a walk or a fly. Again, whatever you did on this side, do on the other side. And if it didn't really didn't work for you, then it's okay, change. So right hand on this right knee, just keep it nice and anchored. Think about your core, sitting up nice and tall, straight spine, not leaning over from one side to the other, and then out to the side. And again, relaxed arm, relaxed shoulder, the shoulder, left shoulder pulling back into the body, straightening out that leg if you can, as much as you can. 
keeping your toe active so you're not just pulling it. Pressing down into the top of the right foot helps give you some balance. Keeping the crown of your head lifted, neck, jaw, face relaxed. Pulling your belly button into the spine and allowing your chest to be open. And then we're going to gently bring that leg back into the center line. Well done. Well done, that's lovely. And there we go, let's bend. Bring it all the way back in. I'm going to turn sideways to this, to this, for this even. So now we have both feet. So um, if your toes are a bit tired, if they're feeling a bit like they've been yanked a bit too much, then outer edge of your feet. If your toes are quite happy, go ahead. Same, same hold this time, both at the same time. And lift your, um, <laughs> lift your elbows, lift your heels off the mat and find your balance place. So lovely long back, allowing the natural curves to be there, of course. When we say straight back, we don't mean ramrod straight. We always mean honor the gentle S curves that are in your spine that lengthen and try not to curl around. So let's take the right foot out first, remembering to pull that shoulder in and then the left, if it works for you. The legs are out to the sides. Switch on your core, lift your chest. Think about what's working here. Think about how you feel. Think about how beautifully balanced you are or not. And practice that kind voice, why not? There's a lot of unkindness in the world. So we can all start by being very kind to ourselves. We'll all be happier and we'll all be nicer. And then if you can take your legs a little further away from each other, go ahead and do that. Heart center lifted and forward. Now here's the tricky bit. We're going to put the legs together while still keeping that balance. And it might not be tricky at all. It might be a piece of cake. Legs along. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to come into Navasan. So we're going to be releasing those toes, keeping that strength in the legs, keeping the back straight. Now, if this is very intense, bend your legs, bring your knees a little closer towards you. <sighs> Think about how energetic you need to be to hold this position of strength and power. And we're not going to be here for very long. So hold, breathe, use your breath. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. Bring those knees in for a lovely hug. Try and keep on that balance if you can. If not, take your feet down towards the mat. Head down towards your knees. And feel any warmth that you've generated in your body. Allow yourself to come back to a little bit of a more restful breath. Well done. So from here, we are going to come into doing some um, more postures lying on the mat. So we're going to ease ourselves down to the mat. However works for you. This surface is a little hard, so I'm not going to be doing any rolling today. Gently coming down to lie on the mat. Bring your knees back into your chest. Give them a nice big squeeze. We're going to work the legs a little more. Take your arms out to the sides. Take your feet up towards the ceiling. So with your arms out, try and press as much of the top of your back into the floor as you can. And the tops of your arms and your forearms. 
and your hands. So lots and lots of contact there. Keeping your arms as far away from each other as you can, or maybe your hands as soon as your visualization, so that your chest is completely open. Bring your toes to your face or towards your face. And push your lower back into the mat. We're going to take both feet down towards the floor. So very slow. Keep lovely contact between your heels or ankles, your knees, your toes, just your big toes. Slowly down towards the floor. And this is a very strong posture, so if you need to, you can take your hands, make them into fists, tuck them just under your, under your hips. And that is hugely helpful to take any tension out of your back. If you're rightly challenging yourself with your arms out to the sides, go ahead and do that. If you can keep a little contact between your lower back and the mat for as long as possible, that would be great. Use your breath. This is a very good posture for raising your energy. Feeling strong. Come all the way down towards the floor. Flatten out your hands to the mat if you feel you need to, if you've got them just by your hips. So all the way down to the floor. So we need to get to that point where we're almost touching and then we start coming up towards the ceiling again. Breathe. If you need to turn your breath into a bit of a puff, go ahead and do that. I'm sounding like a train here, breathing in and then to breathe out, coming all the way back up. Okay, this is really strong. So if you are, have stayed with me here, well done. If you needed to bend your knees, that's absolutely fine too. Come back up to the ceiling, the soles of your feet, bring the toes to your face. And then we're gonna hug the right knee into the chest. Keep the left leg up. Right knee comes in much. Well deserved hug and allow any tension in your lower back to just drain into the floor. Let it go. And now we're going to take that left leg out to the side. So left leg pointing straight up towards the ceiling. Right leg is tucked comfortably into your chest, into your torso. Arms are wrapped around and then we start that movement out. Like a clock ticking backwards. Left leg going out towards the side. Come to the point where you know that if you went any further, you'd start to roll over to the left and stay there. We've already done a lovely opening up, a couple of opening up on the inner thigh when we were sitting up. So we've already had a nice stretch there. Hopefully you've built up some heat and warmth in your body and some energy. And we're going to calm right down after this posture. So the leg comes slowly back up. This time that second hand is moving in the right direction. All the way back up to center. Point your heel up to the ceiling toes to your face, squeeze the muscles in your thigh, in your calf, and release. Bring it in for a hug. Switch over so that both your hands are holding on now to your left leg and right leg gets to do a little bit of work here. Up to the ceiling, toes towards your face, heel towards the sky, and then we're going out to the side. So that second hand, tick, tick, ticking over out to the side, what time are you going to get to? When you get to quarter past, 
Are you at five past? Are you at 10 past? Again, practicing noticing, practicing letting go of judgment, of comparison, of any kind of measuring in a negative way, just noticing. So that light leg having a lovely stretch out to the side. Your core is engaged and strong. Your arms are engaged and strong. And then we're going to bring that leg back up to center again, pushing your lower back into the mat. Nice and slow, clock ticking backwards. A bit like yoga. We go backwards in time in terms of our health and longevity. And there we go, right leg pulling in, into your chest. Give them a lovely squeeze, a little bit of a rock from side to side. Ah, and here it's time for a twist. So arms out, either side. Now, shoulders pinned to the mat. Do not let your shoulders come off the mat. They can slide, they cannot rise. So knees over to the left this time. Let's go left. So either tuck your knees in tight to your chest and take them over to the left, or you can extend your legs, or you can cross your legs over, whatever you feel like doing. This is just simple, simple, simple twist. Knees together, over to the left, focusing on that right shoulder. When your knees are down and can rest, relax your arms, keep that shoulder pinned, and then head over to Face your right arm, right hand. And while you're here, can you settle? Can you release and let go? Can you relax? Completely at ease, enjoying that twist in the spine, right from the base to the top. And then let's bring our heads back to center. Bring our knees back into center and straight over to the other side. So exactly the same on this, type, this side as the other side. Any nice clunks and clicks, enjoy them. And remember to turn your head to the opposite side, away from your knees. Enjoy that sense of being held by the earth, being supported. And allow yourself to completely let go. Bringing your head gently back to center now. And then your knees back into center. One last hug. If you wish to, bring your forehead up to your knees, curl yourself into a tiny ball, as tight as you can. And release, take your legs out to the floor, arms out in a starfish, so you've got space between your arms and your body, and start to figure out what it is that you need to move to find a complete sense of rest and relaxation. Do you need to wiggle your heels? Do you need to adjust your hair? Is there an item of clothing that could move to give you a little bit more comfort and ease? Close your eyes. Start feeling in your body where you need to move. And honor that feeling. Make those little adjustments. Make those little movements that allow you to take up as much space as you want, as much space as you can while still being able to relax and release and let go, come to a sense of being where you need to be, feeling exactly just right in every limb, in your torso, in your neck and head, in your belly and chest. Finding your ease, finding your comfort, finding your rest, 
finding your peace. Eyes gently closed. Allow your eyeballs to come to a complete sense of rest and relaxation and heaviness. Allow them to feel like they're sinking gently back towards the floor. Release all those tiny muscles around your eyes. Let them be completely at peace. Let's take our focus to our breath now, breathing deep down into your belly. Feel your belly rise, feel that dome of your belly as it's full, and the sensation of being full of air with the movement of your diaphragm. And as you breathe out, allow everything to come to being a complete matter. Rest. Breathing in and breathing out, slowly, steadily, easily, comfortably. Taking your breath where it needs to go, using your intuition and tapping into your intuition too understand where it is you need to release, where it is you'd like to let go and ease, the parts of your body that need to heal right now, and trusting in the knowledge that your body is a perfect, amazing, wonderful, and intelligent piece of just general incredibleness, and it will heal itself given the right conditions. So all you need to do is trust your body to heal itself and provide the things it needs. Sleep, rest, peace. Relaxation. Good food, good company. Good time in a way of dealing with any strains and stresses, finding the things that work specifically for you. If you give your body the right conditions, it will do everything it possibly can to heal itself. So for now, taking a breath to any areas that you need or want or wish to show a little more love, a little more empathy, a little more kindness, areas of your body that normally perhaps you might feel any anger or frustration with, or a feeling of less than. Don't shy away from those feelings, examine them, see them for what they are, and do what you can to bring a little love, bring a little kindness, Bring a little gentleness and acceptance and gratitude and santosha into your life, into the way you view yourself. And breathe, breathe deeply, peacefully, easily with every in breath, taking that breath around your body, bringing peace, bringing healing, bringing calm, bringing space. With every out breath, letting go, letting go of anything that no longer serves you. And now, keeping your eyes closed, gently bringing yourself to rest on your right side, noticing how you feel. Easy breath in and out. Notice the feeling of calm, of warmth, of peace. And still keeping your eyes closed, bringing yourself up to sitting, bringing your hands to heart center, feeling your right palm, feeling your left palm, feeling that sense of completeness, of being at peace with yourself, 
of santosha and contentment. And as you breathe in, making that breath huge, filling up every little part of you with that lovely, deep, easy breath. And as you breathe out, allowing your head to drop, chin to chest, settling, relaxing, resting. As you breathe in, gently keeping your head where it is, but opening your eyes. And as you breathe out, bringing your head back to center, lift your chin, smile on your face, hopefully feeling rested, energized, full of potential to do whatever it is that you want to do. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for joining you mind, body, and soul. And thanks for making a lovely practice. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful trip with your friends. I'll see you. Thank soon. you. <laughs> yes, I'll be back next week in the regular place.